Shalom. My name is Adam, and I welcome you to the parable of the vineyard. Every day, Yahuwah is waking up a remnant, a group of people who are coming out of deceptions, realizing our walk is to consist of faith and obedience to His righteous commands. Each week, we read through and examine a portion of the Torah, allowing the Spirit of the Most High to guide, teach, and open our eyes and ears to the wondrous matters out of His law. Join us as we seek to be refined by His Word, preparing ourselves for the return of our King of Kings, being faithful and obedient, walking in His way, truth, and life. And Shabbat Shalom and welcome back, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Parable of the Vineyard YouTube live stream of our Torah portion reading. My name is Adam, your host, and I welcome you. This is week 20, Tetzave, which is Exodus 27, 20 through 30, verse 10. And with this, we have commandment to bring oil for the lamp, which is very interesting concerning the wise and the foolish virgins. We'll talk about that in a minute. And... Uh, about consecrating the priests and their uh, vestments, the breastplate, the stones. Lots to talk about. It may seem like there's not a lot in this Torah portion on the surface, but there's actually quite a bit, and it's pretty interesting. So looking forward to getting into it with you. And before we get started, though, let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, Yahweh Most High, we come before you and bless you again, Father, on this appointed day, um, your seventh day, your day of rest, Father. And we thank you for giving us a pattern uh, at the beginning of time, for us to follow, and that you mark us, that you show it's a sign between us and you when we follow this. And we thank you for opening our eyes to your Sabbaths. We thank you for opening our eyes to your Torah in general, your son, Messiah, Yahushua, to who we know that we can't even believe in him unless you draw us. Father, we just ask that eyes and ears would be opened during this and hearts would be softened to receive your word, that we may be faithful hearers and doers of the same. We love you, and thank you for allowing us to gather like this together across the four corners of the earth to study your Torah together. In Yahushua's mighty name, Amen. And hallelujah. Let's do a little shofar. So good. Okay, here we are at Exodus 27.20. We'll be reading from the Sefer version and cross-referencing with a couple other versions, including the Aramaic. But uh, without any delay, let's get started. Exodus 27.20, And you shall command the children of Yashorel. And if you haven't noticed yet, the typically the first uh, important word in the Torah portion is the name of it. Command is Tetzaveh. You shall command Tetzaveh. You shall command the children of Yashrael that they bring you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. In the tabernacle of the assembly without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aharon and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before Yahuwah. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Yashrael. So, um, you know, there's an amazing parable called the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. And... You know, mainstream Christianity will teach that um, it's people that have the Holy Spirit and don't, or even believers and non-believers. But I beg to differ. I believe it's the difference between people who keep the commandments and don't keep the commandments. Um, the, we did this study last year. Um, the wise and the foolish virgins revisited. I'm going to be kind of updating this article maybe over the next week or two and then doing another updated version of it because you know how it is we just learn more and more every year praise be to yeah um but it, long story short you know this let's just read the let's read part of this uh, parable this is matthew 25 then shall the kingdom of yahuwah be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps you'll notice i put in bold terms that we have to define and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish and they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom comes go ye out to meet them then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said unto the wise give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out 
But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for, enough for us and for you, but go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. These are also terms we need to define. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Adonai, Adonai, open to us. But he answered and said, Amen, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of Adam comes. And that was Matthew 25, 1 through 13. So uh, this is a, it's a pretty long article, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing today. But, you know, we kind of have an idea already. Uh, a lot of it is revealed here just in this Torah portion, the first two verses, right? You shall command the children of Yashrael that they bring you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. That's three of the major like five terms that needed to be defined for that parable because a parable is a hidden story that um, isn't fully revealed except to those who it's revealed to. And what's interesting is if you understand the Torah, then it's an easy parable to understand. Last week, we spoke quite a bit about the tabernacle and how all the vessels were in the tabernacle. And one of them was this seven branch candlestick, which we know reference the seven uh, ecclesia, the set or set apart assemblies, uh, also known as churches, and how this symbolized his people. But even more so, it was inside the tabernacle, which we know that we are the tabernacle. It was literally inside, and it was a commandment of the Torah for the children of Israel to bring the oil that would go into these lamps, right, for the light, right, for the light to be burning. I need seven lighters at one time. So how could the lamps burn unless the children of Israel follow the commandment to bring the oil. It'd be impossible. Impossible. Furthermore, we have other key defining terms. So we read the Torah portion already. How about Proverbs 6.23? For the commandment is a lamp. Uh-oh. The commandment is a lamp and the Torah is light. Now how can the Torah be put forth in the tabernacle without obedience to it? Right? The commandment is a lamp and the Torah is light. Right? And there are proofs of instruction of the way of life. Proverbs 23, 23. We also saw in that parable, buying and selling. Buy the truth and sell it not. Right, They couldn't sell. The, the wise virgins couldn't sell right, the Torah to them. They had to go and buy it for themselves. I can't sell my understanding of, of Torah to you. We have to understand it for ourselves. We have to do it for ourselves. We have to be obedient for ourselves. I can't be obedient for you. You can't be obedient for me. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom, instruction, and understanding. How about this one? Song of Solomon 1.3 Because of the savor of thy good ointments or oil, thy name is as oil or ointment poured forth. Therefore, the, do the virgins love you. Kind of interesting, right? And we know his name is multifaceted. It's not just, you know, you pronounce his name because what good is pronouncing his name right if you don't keep his commandments and you act a fool? But keeping his name or even, you know, proclaiming his name is also keeping his ways. I think there's amazing blessing and power that comes with speaking his name and loving his name and singing to his name and praying in the right name. But really, what good is all that if you're not keeping his Torah, his commandments? So uh, it's just, you know, interesting part of this Torah portion is a big, you know, like the parables are like require like a cipher, right? Um, to decode it. And the word decodes itself, right? You don't need some cryptic cipher. But it's like that in that these terms are only revealed to those that understand the word, that read the word, that abide in the word. So, praise Yah. Uh, interesting part of this uh, portion. So again, I'll actually leave the link for this. It's a pretty, pretty lengthy article. Uh, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minute read or so. It goes through every part of the wise and foolish virgins. And uh, Y'all willing and time allowing, I want to go all through it again and uh, do another video on it. We did it last year, right after the Torah portion last year, and I'm going to put it out again this year because I think this is a very important parable to understand uh, for believers. So, all right, so let's keep going. Now we're in chapter 28. So now let's go to the priest's garments. And take unto you Aharon, your brother, and his sons with him from among the children of Yashrael, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aharon. 
Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aharon's sons. And you shall make holy garments for Aharon, your brother, for glory and for beauty. And do you think the priest, especially the high priest, would look, you know, wouldn't look great or dazzling? I think this is amazing. I, you know, there's different renditions of it, different specific, you know, shades of color. But I like this one. I think this is pretty close. Uh, don't worry about this term Jewish. It wasn't a Jewish high priest. It was the high priest of Israel. Anyways, uh, the golden crown. We're going to read about these terms, the golden crown, uh, or also known as a turban, the priestly breastplate, which we're going to talk about that today, uh, the gemstones that are on that breastplate, the fine linen tunic underneath. He had bare feet, which is interesting. Uh, we talked about this last week in our uh, physical gathering on Shabbat last week that, you know, the, the ark itself was like an electrical box, right, conductor. And it's interesting that the priest had to go in barefoot. It reminds us, of course, of um, Moses having, you know, asked, take, you know, uh, take your shoes off your feet. <laughs> a couple of you corrected me a couple weeks ago. Um, I think it was the, uh, yeah, Torah portion, Shemot, the first portion of Exodus. I said, take your feet off your feet. <laughs> no, take your shoes off your feet for you're standing on holy ground. All right, in the presence of, in the presence of Yahusha. Um, the robe of the ephod. Um, this looks like this one is a little incorrect because it's supposed to be a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate. It looks like it's just, just bells, but, um, the ephod. And anyways, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I think this looks great. It may just be me, but I think it looks great. So, right. So it says, and you shall make holy garments for Aharon, your brother, for glory and for beauty. So it's supposed to be good looking. I think this is. I think it's dazzling. All right, let's read some more. And you shall speak unto all that are wise-hearted. Interesting timing. For whom I have filled with the Ruach Chokmah, the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aharon's garments to consecrate him. We're going to talk a little about this this term a little bit later. Consecrate uh, Kadash to Kodesh, to set, set him apart. He was to be set apart from the rest of the, the, the group that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments with which they shall make a breastplate, an ephod, and a robe, and a broidered coat, a turban, and a belt, that they may make holy garments for Aharon your brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And they shall take gold, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, and they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, of purple, of scarlet, and fine twine linen with cunning work, it shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof, and so it shall be joined together. The belt of the ephod, which is upon it, shall be of the same, according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, and of purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen. Different patterns are shown from different um, versions. And you shall take two onyx stones and engrave on them the, the, the names of the children of Yashrael. Six of their names on one stone and the other six names of the rest on the other stone according to their birth. With the work of an engraver stone, like the engravings of a signet, shall you engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Yashrael. You shall make them to be set in ouches of gold, and you shall put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of a memorial unto the children of Yashrael. And Aharon shall bear their names before Yahweh upon his two shoulders for a memorial. So what we're looking at is right here. It doesn't really show the onyx stones, so yeah, none of these really, none of these graphics are ever really perfect, but <clears throat> a good representation. But we find something interesting here. We know, we know that the book of Hebrews, specifically chapters seven through ten, tells very specifically that our Messiah is our high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, and so we know that. Um, this this high priest was just a for the, the Levitical high priest was just a, a foreshadow of our Messiah but of course he would bear many resemblances and um, characteristics of it specifically you know thinking of the heart that uh, high priests like because there were some bad high priests but there was good high priests uh, thinking of high priests like Aharon and um, Eleazar and Nehas and um, oh, like Zadok and um, Ezra and you know, so and others that just and I'm, I'm forgetting some, I'm sure, 
that loved his people and took care of his people and that's what the high priest was supposed to do they were supposed to care for the people and it says here and you sh- and Aaron shall bear their names before Yahuwah upon his two shoulders for memorial that may not seem like much but again if this is being a foreshadow of our Messiah and what Messiah does for us let's read some scripture <clears throat> Isaiah 46 1 through 7 First, it's going to talk about the idols of the nations. Bell bows down, Nebo stoops. Their idols were upon the beasts and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy laden. They are a burden to the weary beasts. They stoop. They bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to your whore hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even will I carry and deliver you. I don't know if you're catching this when I'm reading this, but like literally he's there from the time that we are born into this world to the time of our old age, if we're fortunate to make it that long. That he's there, he's there to, to, right? He's like, I will carry. Even to your gray hairs will I carry you. Right? And so we see that the high priest was to bear their names before Yahuwah upon his two shoulders for memorial. He's the one that carries us. I have made and I will bear even will I carry and will deliver you. To whom will you liken me and make me equal? And compare me that we may be like. Now he's talking about the nations. They lavish gold out of a bag and weigh silver in the balance. And hire a goldsmith and he makes it a god. They fall down, yea, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him. They carry him and set him in his place. And he stands. From his place he shall not remove, yea, one shall cry unto him. Yet he cannot answer nor save him out of his trouble. The nations, the world... It's interesting. It's it's kind of ironic, but funny. You know, they have to carry their gods. Um, they have to bear them. But ours, he bears us. He carries us. Isaiah 63, 1 through 9. This is talking about Messiah. Who is this that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? This is that glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore are you red? Why are you red in your apparel and your garments like him that treads the wine fat? This is talking about Messiah with the great wine press of Elohim and vestments uh, dipped in blood. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in my anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring them, I bring down their strength to the earth. I will mention the loving kindness of Yahuwah and the praises of Yahuwah according to all that Yahuwah has bestowed upon us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel which he has bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of loving his loving kindness. For he said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them. Right, Our Messiah. In his love and his pity he redeemed them and he bare them. And carry them all the days of old. Deuteronomy 1, 30-31. Yahweh your Elohim, which goes before you, he shall fight for you, according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness, where you have now seen how that Yahweh your Elohim, bare you. He carried you, as a man does carry his son. And all the way that you went, until you came to this place. Psalm sixty-eight, nineteen: Blessed be Yahuwah, who daily loads us with benefits, even the Elohim of our salvation, Silah, carries us. 
1 Peter 5, 6 through 7, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Elohim, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Man. Okay. All right, so that was the ouches. With the names, the names were engraven right on his shoulders. Signifying he's carrying us on his shoulders. And that's what our Elohim does for us. And you shall make ouches of gold, two chains of pure gold to the ends of wreath, wreathen work shall you make them, and fasten the wreathen chains to the ouches. And you shall make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work. After the ephod of the after the work of the ephod shall you make it of gold, of blue, of purple, of scarlet, and fine twined linen shall you make it. Four squares shall it be being doubled, a span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. And you shall set in it the settings of stones, even four rows of stones. So we're talking about this. This is more like a rectangle in this picture, but it should be more of a square. Uh, you shall set it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be sardius, a topaz, a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond, which I think this is incorrect, but we'll talk about that in a second. In the third row, a ligure, an agate, an amethyst. In the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their enclosings. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Yashrael, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet. Every one with his name, they shall be according to the twelve tribes. And you shall make upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreathen work of pure gold. And you shall make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and shall put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And you shall put the two wreathen chains of the gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate. And the other two ends of the, of the two wreathen chains, you shall fashion the two ouches and put them in the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And you shall make two rings of gold, and you shall put them upon the two ends of the breastplate in the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod inward. And two other rings of gold you shall make, and shall put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath, toward the forepart thereof, over against the other coupling thereof, above the belt of the ephod. And they shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof unto the rings of the ephod with a blue with a lace of blue, that it may be above the belt of the ephod, and that the breastplate be not loose from the ephod. And here it is again. And Aharon shall bear the names of the children of Yashrael in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goes into the holy place for memorial before Yahuwah continually. So, just as the he bore the children of Israel basically on the shoulders, right? He also bore the, the children of Israel on his heart. And whew, if we get into that, I'm going to be a mess. <laughs> so, obviously, um, you can understand without even me explaining to you what it would mean for him, for Messiah to put us on his heart. He bears us on his shoulders. He bears us on his heart. And that was the the, sim, the symbol uh, put forth before here. And so um, we have what, what's really interesting is when we look in we look in the, the book of Revelation, chapter 21, and the explanation of um, New Jerusalem, we find almost identical stones except for uh, maybe one and you know i believe i personally believe that it's, it's a translational error because you're going from uh, years of different versions of hebrew manuscripts manuscripts being burnt rewritten translated into greek translated from greek into english and um you know even the translators were like well it could be this stone it could be that stone i believe that the stones that are on the breastplate match the stones that are uh, found in New Jerusalem. And many of you have seen this video. I've shared it a lot. Um, it's amazing. It's about the gemstones in New Jerusalem and what the significance behind it. And I'm going to share that video with you really quickly. And I'll be back in just a second. New Jerusalem, it said, is built, made up of, 12 precious stones that we would make into jewelry now. Now here's the fascinating thing which to me is the final proof that that book is the Word of God, that it must be God inspired. In the last generation only, we've discovered how to make purer light than we had before. Most light is bouncing around, waves crashing into each other, going in all directions so that 
the light coming from that spotlight still lights this side of my face by reflecting off that, that tinsel up there. Um, we're used to light coming at us from all directions. But we've now discovered how to send light in one direction. Laser light is the most common. You've seen laser light beams straight as a die. But we've also got what we call cross-polarized light. A polarized filter, if you can imagine, allows light through like that. But if you put another polarized filter at right angles to that, you've really got a very fine filter. If you take sunglasses and take one lens and put it at right angles to the other, it goes even darker. It only lets very straight light through. Now, people have taken jewels and precious stones and cut a very thin slice for microscopic purposes and then shone cross-polarized light through them to see what happens. To put it very crudely, what happens to these precious stones in pure light? And one of two entirely different things happens with every jewel. The technical term, to give you a bit of science for a moment, is anisotropic jewels and isotropic jewels. Now what happens is this. Some jewels in pure light, whatever their color to begin with, they may be red, blue or green, turn into all the colors of the rainbow and the most fantastic patterns. Other precious stones in pure light lose all their color, just go black, look like a lump of coal dust. And it's only in the last, this generation that people have discovered this unusual property. For example, diamonds in pure light are nothing. Did you get that, ladies? They're Did not even... Hear that? Diamonds, nothing. nothing. They won't be there. <laughs> no. So make the most of them here. <coughs> Rubies, uh, garnets, just lose everything. Emeralds. No, they keep it. Oh, good. There are other stones that are anisotropic and go into these beautiful colors. Now here's the fascinating thing. The 12 precious stones that God uses to build the new Jerusalem are all anisotropic. In pure light, they are all far more beautiful. And God doesn't touch the diamonds or the rubies. He doesn't build with them. Now, let's just put on the screen a picture of these stones. Yeah. Look at the top 12 stones on this picture. And you'll see the stones of the New Jerusalem. Look at the four bottom ones at the bottom of the picture. And you'll see they're black, no attraction, whatever. Now then. Who knew this 2,000 years ago? No scientist knew it. Nobody knew it. John the Apostle writing the, down the book of Revelation as the Lord dictated it to him, he didn't know. Nobody knew except one person in the entire universe and he knew and that was God himself. Where is that written exactly? Revelation 21. Right. Halfway through and you'll find all the 12 stones listed there. And you can just imagine from the picture we've seen on the screen how beautiful the New Jerusalem is going to be. No need for do-it-yourself decoration or changing rooms there. No need. The materials that God uses will be fabulous. From verse 19, 21 right. verse 19. Read them out. Uh, the first foundation was Jasper. Yeah. The, uh, the, the second, Sapphire. The third, Chalcedony. The fourth, Emerald, the fifth, Sarnot, uh, Sardonyx, the sixth, uh, Carnelian, the seventh, Chrysolite, the eighth, Beryl, the ninth, Topaz, the tenth, Chrysoprase, or Chrysoprase, Chrysoprase, the eleventh, Jacinth, and the twelfth, uh, the twelfth, Amethyst. No diamonds, no rubies, no garnets, because they're and they're isotropic. Mm. Now, isn't that amazing? To me, that one thing alone would prove that the Bible was inspired by God because nobody could have known this. They didn't know it until our generation. I, I, don't, I don't think I can watch that video enough. It's just, it shows the majesty the intelligence, the 
the, the foreknowledge, the foresight of, of our creator. And it's just amazing. And um, whew, a couple things about the gemstones here in the Targums, it just confirms that they are, they're done by, by birth, uh, birth order. Uh, you shall fill it with fillings of stones, four rows of precious stones. The first row, Carlini, uh, carnelian, topaz, and carbuncle, written with expression upon it, shall be the name of the three tribes, Reuben, Shimon, and Levi. Uh, the second row, um, anyway, so it just it keeps going. I, I just want to show you that because it goes by order. Um, also, let's see, the Septuagint... The Septuagint reads, Sardius, Topaz, Emerald, Carbuncle, Sapphire, Jasper, Ligure, Agate, Amethyst, Chrysolite, Beryl, Onyx. Um, and the, tar the Targums read, Carnelian, Topaz, Carbuncle, Smaragud, Sapphire, Chalcedony, Ligure, Agate, Amethyst, Chrysolite, Onyx, and Jasper. So I have to imagine it's just language barriers. Uh, for example, like a Diamond. We saw a Diamond here. A precious stone known for its hardness perhaps the jasper or onyx or diamond they don't really know uh so that's why i was saying i don't think it is actually a diamond specifically uh because of that um uh, that video we just watched with the the um the all the colors of the rainbow shining forth through these stones to move, go even further it actually kind of goes into our study from enoch tonight uh from chapter 55 um if you didn't watch it we'll just quickly review it chapter 55 and after that this is talking about the flood of noah or noah's day and after that the head of days repented and said in vain have i destroyed all who dwell on the earth and he swore by his great name henceforth so from this time forward i will not do so to all who dwell on the earth and i will set a sign in heaven and this shall be a pledge of the good faith between me and them forever the rainbow that's the sign of the, the covenant with the earth now listen to this. It's something we don't get in Genesis, but we get in Enoch. So um, I will set a sign in the heaven, and this shall be a pledge of good faith between me and them forever, so long as heaven is above the earth. Well, wait a minute. When would heaven not be above the earth? Well, a new Jerusalem comes down. So the rainbow is only temporary until new Jerusalem comes down and shines that color of the rainbow. Isn't that amazing? Anyways, just thought that was kind of interesting, kind of tied into everything we we're talking about to, uh, with that. So, um, anyway, so as we said, he bears the children of Israel upon the shoulders, upon the heart, and I mean, he loves us, right? He sent his son, Messiah Yahushua, to suffer a brutal death for us, to cleanse us with his own blood, to become a faithful and amazing high priest and king. And our master, that's putting him, that's putting the tribes of Israel on his heart, in my opinion. And that's, that's the love story. Jeremiah 31, 3. Yahweh has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn you? Remember, Messiah said, no one can come to me unless the Father first draws him. Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 15, for you are a holy people unto Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh Elohim has chosen you to be a special people unto himself above all that the people that are upon the face of the earth. Yahweh did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because Yahweh loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, has Yahuwah brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that Yahweh Elohim, he is Elohim, the faithful Elohim, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Right? It's not a one-way love situation here. And repays them that hate them to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hates him. He will repay him to his face. You shall, you shall therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command you this day. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if you will hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that Yahweh Elohim shall keep unto you the covenant and the mercy which he swore unto your fathers. And he will love you, right, if you keep the commandments, and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your corn, your wine, your oil, the increase of your kind, the flocks of your sheep, and the land which he swore unto the, your fathers to give you. And you shall be blessed above all people, 
There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And Yahweh will take away from you all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you know, upon you, but will lay them upon all that hate you. John 15, 1-15, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, which abide means live, no more can you, except you abide, live in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide, if you live in me, and my words abide, live in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might be remained in you, and that your joy might be full. So even like, so we can see that obviously he puts us on his heart, right? But keep this in mind. If we keep his commandments, we're literally in the heart, on top of the heart of our of our master. Uh, oh, where are we? This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And look at this, right? The children of Israel are all supposed to be tightening it together as a one unit. Not some fragmented, broken, hating each other, spitting on each other, despising each other. No. We're all supposed to be together on his heart. Interesting. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knows not what his master does. But I have called you friends, for all things I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Hallelujah. All right, let's keep going. Oh, and think, I have another note here. I mean, think about this. So if, you know, if we're stones, right, stones of New Jerusalem, you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sac sacrifices acceptable to Elohim by Yahushua HaMashiach. And the Haron shall bear the names of the children of Yashrael and the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goes into the holy place for a memorial before Yahweh continually. And he shall put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Tumim, and they shall be upon Aharon's heart when he goes in before Yahuwah. And Aharon shall bear the judgment of the children of Yashrael upon his heart before Yahuwah continually. The Urim and the Tumim. Interesting little stones. Just a couple of verses about them. Numbers 27, 21, And he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before Yahuwah. At his word they shall go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and the, the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. So, literally, Yahuwah can answer his people by prophet, by direct word, by um, dream, by vision, and by the Urim and the Tumim, two little stones. Oh, it's commonly known as a white and a black stone Deuteronomy 33 8 through 10 and of Levi he said let thy Tumim and thy Urim be with thy Holy One whom thou did prove at Masa and with whom thou did strive at the waters of Meribah who said unto his father and to his mother I have not seen him neither did he acknowledge his brethren nor knew he his own children for they have observed thy word and kept thy covenant they shall teach Yaakov thy judgments and Israel thy law thy Torah they shall put incense before you and whole burnt sacrifice upon your altar First Samuel twenty eight six and when Saul inquired of Yahuwah, Yahuwah answered not him not neither by dreams nor by Urim nor by prophets. So this, this answering by Urim is an option. Ezra Two sixty two through sixty three, these sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore were they as polluted from put from the priesthood, and the Tirshatha said unto them that they should not eat of the most holy things till there stood up a priest with Urim and with Tumim. So just uh, some of the history of the Urim and the Tumim. So it's literally two stones that Yahweh answer out of. Interesting. 
And it's also, you know, I'm sorry, I meant to say this earlier. Um, also, you know, the high priest would bear the children of Israel of judgment upon him. Well, let's give glory to our high priest. Our great high priest, Isaiah 53, 1 through 5. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs, so he bare them. And carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Elohim, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Praise, yeah. All right. <clears throat> all right, uh, 31. And you shall make the robe of the ephod of all blue, and there shall be a hole in the top of it in the midst thereof, and it shall have a binding of woven work round about the hole of it, as it were a hole of a habergeon, that it be not rent. And beneath, upon the hem of it, you shall make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about. A golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. And that's what I was saying here. This is supposed to be... Not just bells, but bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate. And it shall be upon Aharon to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goes in unto the holy place before Yahuwah, and when he comes out, that he dies not. Right? So I guess you're, the, holy, the priest, it's, this would be interesting if somebody has some more insight on that, uh, other than like he's not supposed to be, you know, creeping up on Yahuwah. He needs to be like known. I don't know. I, I got nothing. And you shall make a plate of pure gold and engrave upon it like the engravings of a signet. Kodesh Yahuwah. Holiness, set apartness unto Yahuwah. And you shall... So now we're talking about Dachon right there. Right here, it doesn't really say, but it's supposed to be Kodesh Yahuwah. Kodesh, holiness to Yahuwah. Right here, setting on the forehead. Let's read about it. And you shall put it on a lace of blue that it may be upon the turban, upon the forefront of the turban it shall be. And it shall be upon Aharon's forehead that Aharon may bear the iniquity of the holy things with the children of Yashrael shall, ha ha uh, shall hallow in all their holy gifts. And it shall be upon his forehead that they may be accepted before Yahuwah. Oops. All right, so right here. So let's talk about, right, being in the forehead. Revelation 14, 1, And I looked, and lo, Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him 144,000 who had his name had his name, and his father's name written on their foreheads. Deuteronomy 6, 6-9, And these words which I command you this day shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise, and you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be frontlets between your eyes, which is your forehead, right here. Oops. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and your gates. To Ezra 2, 38 through 47, rise and stand and see at the feast of Yahweh the number of those who have been sealed. These are the people that have his name in their forehead. Those who have departed from the shadow of his age, of this age, have received glorious garments from Yahuwah. Take again your full number, O Zion, and conclude the list of your people who are clothed in white, who have fulfilled the Torah of Yahuwah. The number of your children whom you desired is full. Beseech Yahuwah's power that your people who have been called from the beginning may be made holy, set apart consecrated kodesh i ezra saw on mount zion a great multitude which i could not number and they were all praising yahuwah with songs revelation 14 and their midst was a young man of great stature taller than any of the others and on the head of each of them he placed a crown but he was more exalted than they and i was held spellbound then i asked an angel who are these, my, my master? And he answered and said to me, These are they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal, and they have confessed the name of Elohim. Now are they being crowned and receive palms. Then I said to the angel, Who is that young man who places crowns on them and puts palms in their hands? He answered and said to me, He is the son of Elohim, whom they confess in the world. So I began to praise those who had stood valiantly for the name of Yahuwah. His name was in their forehead. Kodesh to Yahuwah. 
right, on their forehead, Kodesh to Yahuwah, holiness unto Yahuwah. All right. And ye shall embroider the coat of fine linen, and ye shall make the turban of fine linen, and ye shall make the belt of needlework. And for Aharon's sons ye shall make coats, and ye shall make for them belts, and bonnets shall ye make for them, for glory and for beauty. And ye shall put them upon Aharon your brother and his sons with him, and shall anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Consecrate. We're going to talk about that here just in a little bit. Setting apart. Um, and you shall make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from the loins even to their thighs they shall reach, and they shall be upon Aharon and upon his sons when they come into the tabernacle of the assembly or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place that they may bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever unto him and to his seed forever. So the high priest and the priests themselves had their garments. Their This is like their, well, call it their armor. And we, ha we have some today, don't we? Let's read about it. Wisdom. The book of Wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon. Part of the Apocrypha. Chapter 5, verses 15 through 23. But the righteous live forever, and their reward is with Yahuwah. The Most High takes care of them. Therefore they will receive a glorious crown and a beautiful diadem from the hand of Yahuwah. We just read about that in 2 Ezra. Because with his right hand he will cover them, and with his arm he will shield them. Yahweh will take his zeal and his whole armor and will arm the creation to repel his enemies and will put on righteousness as a breastplate and wear impartial justice as a helmet. He will take holiness as an invincible shield and sharpens stern wrath for a sword and creation will join with him to fight against the madmen. Shafts of lightning will fly with true aim and will leap to the target as from a well-drawn bow of the clouds. And hailstones full of wrath will be hurled as from a catapult. The water of the sea will rage against them and rivers will relentlessly overwhelm them a mighty wind will rise against them and like a tempest it will winnow them away lawlessness will lay waste the whole earth and evil doing will overturn the thrones of rulers now Ephesians 6 10 through 12 finally be strong in Yahweh and in the strength of his might put on the whole armor of Elohim that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we are not contending against flesh and blood but against the principalities against powers against the the world rulers of this present darkness against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Why did it stop there? Therefore, take the whole armor of Elohim that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your loins with truth, with the Torah, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace, of shalom. Besides all these, taking the shield of faith, with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one. Wow, which is cool. What was that? What did it say? In the... Take holiness as an invincible shield. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim. Pray at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Right. Okay. That's enough. Don't forget, we go to battle every day. Every day. All right, and let's see. Did I have something for the Targums here? No, okay. All right, chapter 29. Consecration. So we're going to talk about consecration. And this is the thing that you shall do unto them that hollow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, and matzah, which is unleavened bread, and matzah cakes tempered with oil, and matzah wafers anointed with oil. Of wheat and flour shall you make them. And you shall put them into one basket and bring them in the basket with the bullock and the two rams. And Aharon and his sons you shall bring into the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and shall wash them with water. And you shall take the garments and put upon Aharon the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastplate and gird him with the belt of the ephod. You shall put the turban upon his head and put the holy crown upon the turban. You shall take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. 
and you shall bring his sons and put coats upon them. And you shall gird them with belts, Ahron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. And the priest's office shall bear there for theirs for a perpetual statute. And you shall consecrate. Right, We're going to talk about this word consecrate, which is to separate. Actually, let's just look it up real quick. Consecrate. And you'll see in this week's Torah portion is the first time this word consecrate comes up. Kadash. To sanctify, to hallow, to dedicate, to prepare, to appoint, to bid, purified, to consecrate, to sanctify, prepare, dedicate, to be hallowed, to be holy, to be sanctified, to be separate, to be set apart, to show oneself sacred, to be honored, to be treated as sacred, to be holy, to observe as holy, keep sacred, honor, set apart, devote, to regard or treat as sacred or hallowed. And you shall consecrate, set apart, hallow Aaron and his sons, right? Even though all of Israel was set apart unto Yah, Aaron and his sons were even set apart from all of Israel. And you shall cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the assembly. And Aharon and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. And you shall kill the bullock before Yahuwah by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And you shall take up the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with your finger. And pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. And you shall take the fat that covers the inwards. And all the call that is above the liver. And the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them. And burn them upon the altar. We're going to talk more about this when we get deep into the book of Leviticus. About why certain organs and parts were required. But let's just talk about it. Uh, first, blood. Well, why was the blood required? Leviticus seventeen fourteen. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is the life thereof. Right? The blood is the life, for the life of the flesh is the blood thereof. So he acquires the life. And remember, before we read all this, remember, we are to be living sacrifices unto Yahuwah. So if he requires, you know, in, in these sacrifices, you know, if we're to be these sacrifices today, right, he requires our life, all of it. Our whole life blood, our whole life force, if you want to call it. I don't know if that's a good word to use. I don't know. Genesis 4.10, and he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. So the, the blood is living, right? Um, so he required the blood. So the blood, the fat, the call about the liver and the two kidneys, right? Why do you require those? The fat. I learned this actually from, from Nathan Reynolds. I had never even thought about it. But like when you fast, you're literally burning your fat. And if we're to be living sacrifices, when you're fasting, it's like, burning the fat upon the altar and giving it to him the excess the extra it goes to him what about the call uh the call above the, the liver it's actually uh the caudit lobe of the liver it's a part of the liver why was the liver required uh some interesting passages regarding the liver testament of reuben 126 the third the spirit of fighting in the liver and the gall what what's what what brings on fighting? Typically anger, right? Testament of Naphtali, 120. For Elohim made all good things in their order. The five senses in the head, he joined on the neck to the head, adding to the hair also for comeliness and glory. Then the heart for understanding, the belly for excrement, and the stomach for grinding, the windpipe for taking in the breath, the liver for wrath the gall for bitterness, the spleen for laughter, the reins for prudence, we'll talk about the reins are, the muscles of the loins for power, the lungs for drawing in, and the loins for strength, and so forth. But the liver is for wrath. So anger, right? All anger, it's given to Yah. The fat is given to Yah. The life is given to Yah. The blood, the life, the, the fat is given to Yah. All anger is given to Yah because He is the one that executes vengeance. Testament of Gad, we're going to read a little bit longer portion here. Uh, Testament of Gad. We're going to read verse 9 through 36. This is a good one. And the spirit of hatred was in me, and I wished not either to hear of Yosef with the ears or see him with the eyes, because he rebuked us to our faces, saying that we were eating of the flock without Judah. For whatsoever thing he told our father, he believed him. I confess now, my children, that oftentimes I wished to kill him, Joseph, because I hated him for my heart. 
Moreover, I hated him yet more for his dreams, and I wished to lick him out of the land of the living, even as a law ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Judah sold him secretly to the Ishmaelites. Thus the Elohim of our fathers delivered him from our hands, that we should not work great lawlessness in Israel. And now, my children, hearken to the words of truth to work righteousness in all the law, the Torah of the Most High, and go not astray through the spirit of hatred, for it is evil in all the doings of men. Whatsoever a man does, the hater abominates him. And though a man works the Torah of Elohim, he praises him not. Though a man fears Elohim and takes pleasure in, in, in that which is righteous, he loves him not. He dispraises the truth. He envies him that prospers. He welcomes evil speaking. He loves arrogance, for hatred blinds his soul. As I also then looked on Joseph. Beware, therefore, my children, for hatred, for it works lawlessness even against Yahweh himself. For it will not hear the words of his commandments concerning the loving of one's neighbor, and it sins against Elohim. For if a brother stumble, it delights immediately to proclaim it to all men, and is urgent that he should be judged for it, and put, to be punished and be put to death. And if it be a servant, it stirs him up against his master, and with every affliction it devises against him, if possibly he can be put to death. For hatred works with envy also against them that prosper. So long as it hears or sees their success, it always languishes. For as love would quicken even the dead and would call back them that are condemned to die, so hatred would slay the living, and those that had sinned venially it would not suffer to live. For the spirit of hatred works together with Satan through hastiness of spirits in all things to men's death, but the spirit of love works together with the law of Elohim in long suffering unto the salvation of men. Hatred, therefore, is evil, for it constantly mates with lying, speaking against the truth, and it makes small things to be great, and causes the light to be darkness, and calls the sweet bitter, and teaches slander, and kindles wrath, and stirs up war, and violence, and all covetousness. It fills the heart with evils and devilish poison. These things, therefore, I say unto you from experience, my children, that you may drive forth hatred, which is of the devil, and cleave to the love of Elohim. Righteousness casts out hatred, humility destroys envy, for he that is just and humble is ashamed to do what is unjust, being reproved not of another, but of his own heart, because Yahweh looks upon his inclination. He speaks not against the holy man, because of the fear of Elohim overcomes hatred. For fearing lest he should offend Yahuwah, he will do he will not do wrong to any man, even in thought. These things I learned at last, after I had repented concerning Joseph. For true repentance after a godly sort destroys ignorance, and drives away the darkness, and enlightens the eyes, and gives knowledge to the soul, and leads the mind to salvation. And those things which it has not learnt from man, it knows through repentance. For Elohim brought upon me a disease of the liver, so all that to say this, disease upon the liver, and had not the prayers of Yaakov my father succured me, which is to comfort me, it had hardly failed, but my spirit had departed. For by what things a man transgresses, by the same also is he punished. Since therefore my liver was set mercilessly against Yosef, in my liver too I suffered mercilessly, and I was judged for eleven months, for so long as the time I had been angry against Yosef. This is why, right, all anger, all hatred, all malice, right, Give, putting it away, giving it to you. The kidneys. Testament of Naphtali, uh, 120. For Elohim made all good things. All right, so we read all that. Um, so we hit here. The reins for prudence. The Hebrew word for rain. Kilya. It's part of his name. Yeah. Kilya. Kidneys. Reins. The, the physical organ or the seat of emotion or affection. Right? Figuratively, the mind, but it is typical. It is the kidneys, right? Literally, the kidneys. So, your mind, our whole mind, our prudence. Uh, let's see. Do I have some? Uh, here's a verse. Jeremiah seventeen ten. I Yahweh search the heart. I try the kidneys, the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing right so our works our mind our works everything we do is given to him as well so just some interest we'll we'll delve more into that when we get into um leviticus because it talks a lot about these organs but uh just a quick little uh thing there exodus 29 14 but the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung you shall burn with fire without the camp it is a sin offering you shall also take one ram and a and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram 
And you shall slay the ram, and you shall take his blood and sprinkle it round about the altar. And you shall cut the ram in pieces and wash the inwards of him. And his legs, put them into his pieces and into his head. And you shall burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto Yahuwah. It is a sweet savor and an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. We'll talk more about this when we get to Leviticus. You shall take the other ram and Aharon and his sons and shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Then you shall kill the ram and take of his blood and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aharon and the right ear of his sons and upon the thumb of their right hand and upon the great toe of their foot and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. So we have the blood goes on the ear the thumb, and the toe, right? So hearing the word of Yah, doing the word of Yah, and walking in the word of Yah. Just a thought. 21, you shall take the blood that is upon the altar and the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aharon and upon his garments and upon his sons, upon the garments of his with sons with him. And he shall be hallowed and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. And you shall take of the fat of the ram and the fat of the rump and the fat that covers the inwards and the collar of the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them and the right shoulder for it is a ram of consecration and one loaf of bread and one cake of oil bread and one wafer out of the basket of the matzah that is before Yahuwah. And you shall put all in the hands uh, put all in the hands of Aharon and in the hands of his sons and shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. And you shall receive them of your hands and burn them upon the altar for a burnt offering for a sweet savor before Yahuwah. It is an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And you shall take of the breast of the ram of Aharon's consecration and wave it for a wave offering before Yahuwah. And it shall be your part. And you shall sanctify the breast of the wave offering and the shoulder of the heave offering which is waved and which is heaved up of the ram of the consecration, even that which is for Aharon and of that which is for his sons. And it shall be Aharon's and his sons by a statute forever from the children of Yashrael, for it is a heave offering. And it shall be a heave offering from the children of Yashrael of the sacrifice of their peace offerings, even their heave offering unto Yahuwah. So this is how the priests, um, uh, the, so Aaron and his sons, the priests, the Levites, this is how they, this is how they eat, basically. Is from the tithes and from the, the sacrifice offerings of the children of Israel. And the holy garments of Aharon shall be his sons after him to be anointed therein and to be consecrated in them. And that son is the priest in his stead. I'm sorry. And that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days. And when he comes in the tabernacle of the assembly to minister in the holy place, and he shall take the ram of consecration and seethe his flesh in the holy place. And Aharon and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram and their bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And they shall eat those things which those things wherewith the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy. And if out of the flesh of the consecrations or of the bread remain unto the morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten because it is holy. And thus shall you do unto Aharon and to his sons according to all which I have commanded you. Seven days shall you consecrate them. And you shall offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for atonement. And you shall cleanse the altar when you have made atonement for it. And you shall anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days shall you make an atonement for the altar and to sanctify it. And it shall be an altar most holy. Whatsoever touches the altar shall be holy. Now this is that which you shall offer upon the altar. Two lambs of the first year day by day continually. The one lamb shall you offer in the morning and the other lamb you shall offer at evening. And with one lamb a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil and the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb you shall offer at evening and shall do thereto according to the meat offering of the morning, and according to the drink offering thereof, for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahuwah, where I will meet with you to speak with the, speak there unto you. I'm just curious if this says something different in the Targums here. 29, what is this? 29, 42... Yeah, here we go. A perpetual slaughtering for your generations at the door of the tabernacle of ordinance before Yahuwah, where I will appoint my word to meet with you there, to speak with you there. Right? There I'll appoint my word to meet with the sons of Yashrael, and I will be sanctified in their rulers for my glory. So it's my right, it's always been Messiah. And there I will meet with the children of Yashrael in the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the assembly and the altar, and I will sanctify also both the uh, both Aharon and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. And I will dwell among them, the children of Israel, and will be their Elohim. And they shall know that I am Yahweh Lehaikim, that brought them forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, that I may dwell among them. I am Yahweh Elohaikim. So we talked quite a bit about 
um, this consecration or being set apart. And this word is used for many different parts. Uh, Kadesh, Kodesh, set apart. The first mention of it is the Shabbat, the seventh day. Uh, also, the set apart is his, the firstborn, his people in general, the priests, uh, Aaron, of course, the high priest, Mount Sinai was uh, set apart, the priests, garments, offerings, the altar, the tabernacle, Yahuwah himself, right? The year of Jubilee, the, our homes, the home itself, Nazarites. But take a guess what was called set apart most often that I saw, at least saw. Sabbath. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, and we're going to read uh, verses, uh, chapter 30, verses 1 through 10. And I've got one other thing to read. And you shall make an altar to burn incense upon the shittim wood, shall you make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof. And you shall make it unto a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shall you make it to under the crown of it. By the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it, shall you make it. And they shall be four places for the staves to bear it withal. And you shall make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. And you shall put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet you. And Aharon shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning, where when he dresses the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aharon lights the lamps at evening, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before Yahuwah throughout your generations." You shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall you pour drink offering thereon, and Aharon shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto Yahuwah. So we talked about uh, the sacrifices. We talked about the, the incense. Well, let's read a cool little passage here in Psalm 50 in the Aramaic. Psalm 50, a hymn composed by Asaph. Mighty is Elohim. Yahuwah spoke at the creation a song, and he carved out the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. The perfection and the beginning of the eternal creation is from Zion, and from there its beauty is complete. Elohim will be revealed. The righteous will say on the great day of judgment, Our Elohim will come, and he will not neglect to vindicate his people. Fire will blaze before him, and around him a storm will rage mightily. He will call to the angels of the height above, and to the righteous of the earth below, to extend judgment to his people. Right? Remember his, the breastplate of judgment on his heart? Gather to me my pious ones, my righteous ones, who have made or kept my covenant, and fulfilled my Torah, and have engaged in prayer, which is likened to a sacrifice. Pray without ceasing, Paul says, does he not? In any case, brothers and sisters, I pray that uh, you were blessed by this, and um, may Yahweh be blessed and praised. May his son, Messiah Yahusha, our king, our savior, our creator, uh, be praised, who is worthy of all glory and honor and praise and might and everything to, uh, unto him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Yahweh Most High, we come before you and bless you in Yahusha's name. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for lavishing us with your love. Thank you for bearing us upon your shoulders. Thank you for bearing us upon your heart. Thank you for saving us by your own blood, Messiah Yahusha. We thank you for opening our eyes to your truth, to the, your true Messiah, not the lawless one, but your true Messiah. We just ask that you give us understanding every day, every hour, every week, every month, every Shabbat. Let us grow in your love and in your truth. Father, we thank you and we just long to be with you. We long for the return of Messiah Yahushua. In his name, Yahushua HaMashiach, do we pray and bless you. Mark, mark your people, Father. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, um, Passover is less than 40 days. We have the sign-ups. It should be still in our uh, the description box if you want to sign up. We're getting close to being full. I think we're somewhere around 620, 630. We're cutting it off at 700. Um, but it's okay. Even if we're filled up, we'll have a waiting list because uh, every event I've ever done, 20 to 30% of the people cancel. So more than likely, some spots will fill up or will open up. So um, with that, we'll do a couple songs today. And I look forward to seeing you next week. 
And um, what other announcements? Oh, the United and Ya event that's going on uh, tomorrow or in the morning. And um, I'll try to make sure to put a link for that as well. We're uh, we're also we're doing we have a little segment there. Or we had to pre-record it last week because uh, we don't have the ability to live stream at our Shabbat station right now. Um, so we pre-recorded it last Shabbat, but uh, uh, the um, the band we did a couple songs and we did a little bit of scripture reading, a little prayer. Um, so if you want to watch it on United and Yah event, you can do so. I'll probably also upload it next week to the channel if you guys want to watch it there as well. So anyways, Shabbat Shalom to you and we will see you next week. Shalom. I sing to Yahweh, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise him. Elohim of my Father And I exalt Him Yahuwah is a man of battle Yahuwah is His name He has cast Pharaoh's chariots And his army into the sea and his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them, 
They went down to the bottom like a stone Your right hand, oh Yahuwah Has become great in power Your right hand, oh Yahuwah Has crushed the enemy And in the greatness of your excellence You pulled down those who rose up against you You sent forth your wrath It consumed them like stubble And with the wind of your nostrils The waters were heaped up The floods stood like a wall The depths became stiff In the heart of the sea The enemy said I pursue, I overtake I divide the spoil My being is satisfied on them I draw out my sword My hand destroys them You blew with your wind The sea covered them They sank like lead in the mighty waters Who is like you? Yahuwah, among the mighty ones Who is like you, great in Kodeshah Awesome in praises, working wonders You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them In your kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed In your strength, you guided them to your Kodesh dwelling. Peoples heard, they trembled. Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab. Trembling grips them, all the inhabitants of Canaan. Melted. Fear and dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm. They are as silent as a stone. Until your people pass over, O oh, Yahuwah. Until the people whom you have bought pass over. You bring them in and plant them In the mountain of your inheritance In the place, O oh, Yahuwah Which you have made for your own dwelling The meek dash, O oh, Yahuwah Which your hands have prepared Yahuwah reigns forever And ever